Glib Audio Stories presents The Psychic, Episode 6, by Silas Scott and Pinkleet. Content Warning, Strong Language and Mentions of Past Abuse Rob Byrne sat on a stool at a bar alone on his third beer. Before, he would have gladly made contact with a stranger. Before, he would have taken said stranger home to a shabby studio and a frameless mattress. But he had made a promise. He was done with that life. Said promise was not made to himself. He had never been able to keep a promise to himself, but to his uncle. A man who had taken him in for the second time since he had turned 18, now 30, and given him his own apartment. A real apartment with rooms and a bed. Rob didn't see the appeal his uncle had apparently found in helping him. He was a whore, an addict, and a nutter. Of course, that was how Rob always thought of himself, or at least for the past 12 years. So, when a strong hand plunked onto the counter between him and his drink, Rob didn't look up. Care to tell me why you've decided to cockblock my alcoholism? I'm sorry, went the voice that was attached to the man who was attached to the hand. Rob fanned himself, a nervous habit he had never really grown out of. Look, I wasn't looking to be approached today. The man spoke again. Well, I wasn't looking to be hitting up a bigulous paraphile and asking for his number, but here we are. Rob's hand stopped mid fan. He raised his head to finally look up at the other man and said incredulously, I'm sorry, was that supposed to be a line? Because it was remarkably insulting. The man just shrugged. Can't it be both? Looking up, Rob noticed three things. One, the lock of wavy hair that bounced in front of the stranger's face like Superman's curl. Two, he was wearing scrubs. And three, oh God, he was hot. Rob quit fanning himself to rest his head on his hand. I suppose you want to buy me a drink? The other eyed his empty glasses. How about I order you water and we call it even? God, I must look cheaper than I used to. The man took the stool next to Rob. Though, Rob thought he wasn't invited. Actually, you remind me of a diamond. Rob coughed a brow. Glittery and hard. Expensive and gorgeous. Are you calling me a prostitute? The man's overconfident smile fell. Because you wouldn't be completely wrong in that regard, but I'm sort of retired. I wasn't trying to imply that I, I just meant you're hot. Well then say that, darling. Rob began fanning himself again. I'm not a mind reader. A psychic, yes, but a mind reader, not a chance. There was a silence between them. Still want that water? Can I get a name first? Romeo. Romeo Jules. Rob let out a squeak of a laugh. When the other man didn't seem to find it so funny, he stopped. But God, the situation was hilarious. Rob eyed Romeo carefully and raised his brow. You're serious? Yeah, I get that a lot. And how many strange men have you approached to get that reaction? Actually, usually they're approaching me. I can definitely see that. Rob nodded. I'm Rob. Is that a yes to the water? That's an I'll buy myself another beer. Romeo seemed content with Rob not leaving at least, and ordered one for himself as well. Are you from around here? Romeo pried. Sort of. Technically I grew up farther from the city, but I've been living here since I was 18, so... Rob shrugged. You? Been here all my life. One of my moms is from London, but my other one is from New York. They adopted me out of New York City, and we just sort of never left. Rob blinked. I didn't ask for your life story, but I guess I'm glad you're comfortable. Romeo brushed the lock of hair from his forehead, as if suddenly noticing it was there. Sorry. I tend to run on when I'm nervous. There's nothing to be nervous about, darling. I am probably the easiest person you could be talking to right now. Did you just call yourself easy? Rob placed his head in one hand, fanning himself with the other, and spoke only after stopping. Look, you're cute, but I promised someone I wouldn't be a whore anymore, and I really don't think you understand what that means. Romeo looked taken aback. Oh, shit, you're in a relationship? Well, no. Rob fumbled, his hands tumbling about each other as he tried not to fan. I'm just not like that anymore. Wait, are you saying the only way you'd sleep with me is if I paid you? No! 
Rob panicked, then calmed, hiding his face behind one hand. God, no. Then I don't understand the problem. Romeo stopped. Do you want me to leave? No. Rob breathed weakly. I just... God, I don't know. Maybe I'm nervous too? Romeo laughed a golden boy type of laugh. What do you have to be nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I'm talking to an incredibly jacked Goldilocks doctor who wants to get into my pants. What is there? I don't think you use the term Goldilocks correctly. Rob waved him off. Whatever it means to have perfect golden curls, then. Was that a line? No. The two men sat with their beers before Romeo finally asked again. So can I get your number, then? Rob shrugged. Sure. Where's your phone? Romeo took a heavy cage smartphone out of his back pocket, brought up the contacts, and handed it to Rob. Rob punched in his number and handed it back. Romeo sent a message, just to check, and Rob's phone buzzed. He glanced at the screen. Didn't trust me? Just wanted to be sure. God, we are a mess. Romeo laughed again. I'm a perfect curls, perfect body, perfect eye doctor. I didn't say anything about your eyes. Romeo went silent. But they are... Nice. Romeo laughed. I don't see what's so funny, darling. Nothing. You're just cute. We'll see how cute you think I am after our first date. Romeo frowned. You're not, like, violent, are you? If you mean am I a murderer or a date abuser, no. If you're asking if I'm into that kinky shit, I feel you should know that now before we get into anything. Romeo shifted but did not back down. Well, maybe we could start with a date and see where it goes from there? Rob breathed one of his dramatic sighs. <sighs> I think I'm okay with trying. Where were you thinking? Maybe the beach? A walk in the park? Wow, you're romantic. You're not? I don't try. Why not? It's easier that way. Romeo went silent, and Rob suddenly felt as if he'd made a grave mistake. Are you okay? asked Romeo. Do you still want to sleep with me? Yes. Then God, yes. Rob fumbled to put his keys in the lock after walking back to his apartment. He wasn't shit-faced, but he was definitely ditzy enough to miss the keyhole a few times. Shit, he mumbled as he, for a moment, worried he had gotten the key stuck in the door. Rob? A voice had called out to the drunk man. Rob jumped, dropping his keys with a, what? Fuck! He looked over to see his uncle standing there. The tall man ran his hands through his blonde, almost white hair. They didn't look related. Rob had brown curls and brown eyes. Gideon's skin was pale white and his eyes were an inky black color, while Rob was more on the tanner side, with green eyes, a stark contrast. Yet Gideon was, in fact, his mother's brother. Gideon walked over to Rob, having just walked off the elevator to help him pick up his keys. You feeling okay? Gideon asked as he put the keys in the door. Yeah. Rob grumbled, irritated, though more at the keys than anything else. Let's get you inside and get you a drink of water, Gideon said with a light chuckle as he reached out his hand to help Rob into the apartment. Rob's face was hot and pink, but he stepped aside for Gideon to open the door. He stumbled in, holding lightly onto his uncle as he did. Gideon guided Rob into the place and sat him down on the couch. Rob huffed as he was plopped down. Gideon stepped into the kitchen, pulling out a clean glass. So, what fun did you have? Rob held himself. What's it to you? He drew. I was just curious, Gideon said, pouring water into the cup. No need to bite my head off. He chuckled. It's not funny, Rob grumbled. I'm tired. Just drink this before you go to sleep, Gideon said, walking over and holding out the cup for Rob to take. It'll help the hangover. Rob scrunched his nose at the drink before taking it with a shaking hand. Thanks. He held his head, resting his other hand in the drink precariously on his thigh. Gideon sat in the chair across from Rob, reaching to loosen up the tie on his neck. You know it's 3 a.m., right? He commented. The corner of Rob's lips drew ever downward. I didn't. Is that a problem? No, Gideon said casually, leaning back on the chair. Just wanted to make sure you knew. Well, thanks, Rob grumbled. You know I'm fine. His phone buzzed. He took it from his front pocket to see a text from Romeo reading, You get home okay? And began to text back, almost pointedly ignoring Gideon now. 
Gideon watched Rob for a moment before tapping his knees as he stood up. Well, if you're okay, I'll head down the hall, he said, starting to walk towards the door before pausing next to Rob on the couch. You'll drink the water, right? Rob stared into the cup for a long moment before taking an unsteady sip. He winced as the cold water touched the roof of his mouth. Thanks, he muttered, still not looking at Gideon. He couldn't face him, not right then, not wasted as he was. Gideon pat Rob's shoulder before walking out of the apartment, a soft click as the door locked behind him. Rob's sleep was dreamless, the alcohol in his system ebbing away any dream or terror that dared show its face. The next morning, Rob woke up to another text from Romeo, whose contact had been inexplicably changed to Loverboy the night before. Morning. He slipped a phone back into his pocket, rubbing his hand over his face. Not now, he thought. Rob was tired and hungover. He really didn't feel like dealing with the happenings of last night, so he decided he was going to do his best to forget about them. His phone buzzed again. Still want that date? Rob sighed as he typed. Yeah, sure. Can it wait? I was thinking brunch. You eat brunch? Lunch, then. Rob could not stop the eye roll that came upon reading that message. Well, you couldn't say he didn't live up to his name. Okay, lover boy. Rob's finger hovered over the word before he continued typing. You got me. I'm fine with lunch, but where? It was a minute before he got another text which read, the sandwiches, sandwiches, on 5th. Meet me at 10. Rob made a particularly gross face at his phone. 10's a little early for lunch. I have a shift at 12. Take it or leave it. Rob took it. The sandwich shop wasn't by the water, nor was it near any sand other than that of the construction going on across the street, which was likely not the vibe they were going for. He walked into the restaurant and looked around. The lighting was dimmed, and there was some type of incense burning behind the register. There was a shelf on the back filled with different types of sand and glass jars, as well as one on each table, probably making up for the lack of sandy setting outside. Each table had a cloth, each a different floral pattern. Nothing in the place matched, but somehow everything went together in a sort of knick-knacky way. Rob's eyes searched the room for any sign of his Romeo until they landed on the blonde man. Oh god. Romeo was wearing blue scrubs, and had Rob really sunk that low that he was now dating a man who unironically wore dinosaur compression socks? Apparently. Upon looking up from his phone, Romeo waved him over. Rob was fanning himself, one elbow on his other hand, as he made his way to take the seat across the table. Romeo grinned. I was worried you wouldn't show. Rob considered that. I'm on time. Yeah, but your text... What text? The one about ten being too early? Romeo's forehead creased slightly. Rob shifted. It was a joke. People joke. Oh, Romeo frowned. Sorry if I didn't immediately consider your protestation of the plans I was trying to make as markedly insincere. It's fine. Romeo cocked a brow. That was sarcasm, babe. Rob shifted. He was never any good at picking out cues that led to sarcasm, or any other sort of social readings for that matter. God, fucking was a lot easier. We're on a babe basis now? He tried not to make it too clear that he just wanted to move the subject away from himself. Romeo flashed a perfectly kept smile. If you're okay with that. I'll just pretend you say babe like I say darling, darling. Romeo frowned and let out a breath through his teeth. If you didn't want me to call you that, you could just say it. Rob stopped fanning. What? No, I said I'm fine with it. That's not what you said. It was implied. I don't think it was. The two stayed quiet for a few seconds, that seemed like a minute, before Romeo stood. Rob dropped his face to his hands. God, you're sick of me already? Romeo frowned. Um, no, I'm hungry, and we came here to eat. Right. Rob sighed, both embarrassed and a little relieved. He walked up to the counter with Romeo. After ordering, Romeo stepped aside for his date. Rob noted to him, Oh, you haven't paid. Romeo blinked. We're not ordering together? Are you paying? Romeo sighed. This is where you step in and offer your wallet in a chivalrous attempt at being romantic. I'm not chivalrous, nor am I romantic. 
We've established this. Romeo pinched the bridge of his nose. Yes, I'm paying. Well, you could have just said that, darling. Rob ordered. Also, he said as they waited for their sandwiches, I'm not the man in the relationship. Never was. As a gay, Romeo started, which had no way that Rob could see of ending well. I don't do outdated gender roles. Rob sighed in that overly dramatized way he often did. I'm also poor as fuck. I see, Romeo frowned. Well, in that case, I don't mind paying. There was another silence before Romeo asked, Did I ever ask where you work? No, I don't think you did. Romeo waited for a finish that never came. Okay, so where then? I don't. Like I said last time, I don't fuck for money anymore, and that was my job. Romeo was quiet again for a moment. So you have no source of income? Is that a deal breaker? No. Then, no. You live with family then? Romeo interrogated. Sort of. I mooch off my uncle. He lives across the hall. That's not endearing. And anything else I said was? I wasn't trying to be love, it's just the hard truth. But, Romeo pried, you're not looking for work? You mean respectable work? All work is respectable, unless you're like a scam artist or something. Or a whore. Romeo looked offended? That couldn't be right. That's not what I meant, and you know it. Do I? You're not denying it. Okay, Romeo stated. I deny it. I'm under the opinion that sex work is honest work that needs to be decriminalized and its workers respected. Rob did not know how to respond to that, so he just said, putting his chin in his hand, You're just saying that to woo me. No, Romeo insisted, and I'd appreciate if you didn't assume things that I say are just futile attempts to get in your pants. Rob frowned deeply. I didn't mean... I was joking. I'm sorry. And you're avoiding the subject. What subject? The subject of are you looking for work? Sorry, of course I'm looking for work, but I don't have a college education and I just got out of the hospital like a week ago and places don't bite that fast. Romeo's brow knit. Wait, why were you in the hospital? Rob touched his mouth before pulling his hands away and licking his lips nervously. He searched the ground for an answer that wouldn't surely scare the other man away, but of course it helped none. So he decided on the truth. Somebody knifed me like a piece of meat, okay? My ex, she... He waved his hands in an all-encompassing gesture. Got pissed? That's something. Romeo's hand flew to cover his mouth. Oh my god, are you... I mean, I'm glad you're... I'm glad you... Oh my god. Rob waited for him to form a coherent sentence, but clearly that was too much to ask. Are you done? Romeo sighed, cheeks pinkening. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. You'd think you'd seen worse at the hospital. I'm an infectious disease specialist, he said. I don't touch stabbings anymore unless there's, well, an infection involved. Their sandwiches were done, and Romeo got up to get them. As he sat back down, he licked his lips and placed Rob's sandwich in front of Rob, unwrapping his own. Rob started to unwrap his, then hesitated. Romeo swallowed his bite before asking, Something wrong? Rob laughed a bit nervously. I just didn't think it'd still be here. Romeo frowned. If you want me to leave, I can- No! Rob cut him off quickly. No, no, I just didn't think you'd still find me appealing? Romeo looked surprised, but kept eating. After another minute of chewing and swallowing, he said, which part of this interaction did you think would make me not find you appealing? Because you didn't offer to pay? No. Everything. Rob, I don't understand, Romeo admitted before stopping for another bite, throat working as he swallowed. You're a very attractive man. With a shitty past and a psycho ex-girlfriend? Your past isn't shitty, Rob. And even if it were, it's your past. I'm actually really proud of you for trying to get your life back on track. You seem like you really care about your uncle, and I immensely respect that. And just so you know, I'm pretty much invincible. I could care less about an ex who's out to get you, as long as I can protect you through it. No one's invincible, Rob pointed plainly, but thanks. Of course, now eat. 
When do you have to leave? Rob asked. 11.30, but I bought you a sandwich and I expect you to eat it. Well, slow down there, Romeo. I'm only a sub in bed. Romeo touched his temple. Headache? Yes, you are. Rob went quiet. After a few seconds, he said, You know, you can end this date at any time. What? Romeo frowned. No, I don't want to do that. You called me a headache, Rob pointed. I think you've made it pretty clear that you... Okay, so joke didn't land, but I like you, Rob. I really do. Rob scratched the top of his ear. You do? Yes. What, is that hard to believe? That's not something you should assume. I'm sorry. You don't like me, do you? No, I do, Rob said quickly. I mean, as much as I can like someone who keeps insulting me for no reason. I... Romeo seemed to ponder that for a second. Finally, he said, You're right, I'm an ass. Self-depreciation in lieu of an apology. Charming. Romeo winced. I suck at this. I'm sorry. I just don't really know how to act on a date, I guess. Clearly. I mean, the last time I went on a date was high school? Rob was about to take a bite of his sandwich, but that stopped him. Now you're blatantly lying to my face? And how many dates have you had, Casanova? Rob thought back. What counted as a date? Probably not the types of interactions he'd had recently. Why does that matter? I'm gross. There was silence. You're not gross. A little blunt and maybe a bit rude at times, but not gross. You'll get to know me. Romeo raised a brow. Are you fishing? A look of offense flashed across Rob's face. No, darling, I'm depressed. There's a difference. I'm sorry, Romeo sighed. Please don't be. Anyway, Romeo flipped the subject back. I haven't been on a date because I was busy with school, and now that I'm a doctor, I'm busy with that. Yes, I can tell. We're having lunch at 10 a.m. You keep bringing that up. It's really not that weird. Darling, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit hungover from last night. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have had so many beers, Romeo pointed. But Rob countered. I've done worse. He paused before asking, Where'd you go to school? NYU. You? Oh, love, I didn't go to college. High school. Uh, Rob bit into his sandwich and swallowed. Where? Why does that matter? Rob frowned. Just making conversation. Rob sighed. Academy of the One True Christ. Romeo stopped eating. He was silent. It's upstate, Rob explained, but Romeo shook his head. He looked bewildered and a little sorry for Rob. No, I've heard of it, but that's like a Revelite school, right? Rob stopped fanning himself. Revelite was what outsiders called members of the Church of Joseph Hayfield, a Bible-based church that started in the 1800s by a man with the same name who claimed to be a prophet. They got their name from an ongoing belief that the world was currently going through the prophecies of the book of Revelation, and that it was coming to an end. They were incredibly strict, and outsiders and apostates often called the church a cult. Rob was one of those apostates. He'd seen firsthand the damage they could do, and didn't exactly like talking about it. Yes, Rob stated after he realized that Romeo was actually looking for an answer. And? Rob. You know that's a cult. Actually, yes I do, and if I did happen to still be in it, telling me it's a cult would not help. Right. I'm sure you get told that a lot. Rob shrugged. Mostly while knocking on doors, and getting called that actually made me firmer in my beliefs. It made me feel persecuted or whatever. He waved his hand to punctuate his indifference. So, how'd you get out? Rob looked at the other man with an expression that read, you really want to know? I knew there must have been a better way to live by the time I was 16 and wanted to off myself, but when I was 18, my dad pushed me down the stairs. He took me to the hospital and I was drugged, so I told them what happened. He ended up in jail and I was technically an adult, so I ended up in a hotel with nothing to live off of. You couldn't go to family? You mean my family that was in a cult? I mean your uncle. Rob went back to fanning himself. I did go to him when my other option was to be on the streets. Only stayed with him for like a year, though. He was too good for me, or at least that's what I thought at the time. Ouch. You live with him again, though, right? 
Sort of. I live in an apartment a few doors down. He got it for me, though. That was nice of him. Yeah, well, I wasn't exactly thriving on my own, and I don't think he understands how much I appreciate it. You should show him, then. I don't think anything I could do would be enough. You could start by getting a job. Oh, darling, it, that's not from lack of trying. I could get you a job. I used to work in an escape room while I was in university. I still know the owner, and Rob cut him off. You don't have to do that. You don't even know me. For all you know, I could be the worst employee in the world. I doubt you're the worst employee in the world. Besides, I don't work there anymore. It'd be no skin off my back. Huh? Rob frowned. It wouldn't bother me, Romeo clarified, if they didn't like you there. You could at least try. Rob paused, then... Thank you. Of course, I want to help. Rob rested his chin on his hand. You're a good guy, you know that? I like to think so. Don't get cocky, Rob joked. Romeo just finished. You're a good guy too. And Rob wasn't expecting that. Not exactly good at taking compliments. He asked, You think so? Yes, I do, Romeo stated in a very matter-of-fact manner. Oh. Rob hesitated before finally saying, Well, thanks. I speak the truth. Rob smiled. You said you had two moms, right? Last night? Romeo didn't look like he meant any offense. Just surprised. You remember that? Through all the drinking? I told you I've done worse. Rob sighed. You want to tell me about them? Oh, sure. Mama is an artist. I call one of them Mama and the other Mom. A tattoo artist, actually, but she makes jewelry. Mom was a social media manager for Pip's Cereal before they adopted me, then a stay-at-home mom for most of my life. But when I moved out for college, she went back to social media managing. She works at Black Horse Comics now. Like I said before, Mom's from England, and Mom is born and raised in New York City. What about your uncle? What's he like? What does he do for a living? Uncle Gideon? He's great. He works for the government, for the psionic display of affection or something. Rob waved it off like he hadn't just made a joke. The Psionic Defense Agency? That's so cool. Like I said before, he's helped me so much. He's a good guy. I just sometimes worry I won't ever be good enough for him, you know? You're not going to leave him again, are you? No. God, no. Rob shook his head and rested it in his hand. Look, even if I could do well on my own, last time I left it broke his heart. I can't do that to him again. If it broke his heart, he obviously still cares about you, Rob. Enough to where he's helping you so much, at least. Right, right. I just think he's mad at me right now. Wait, why would you think that? We had a sort of a falling out, I guess. After the whole stabbing situation. I accused him of something because of a dream I had, and he... You accused him of something because of a dream? Romeo's brow knit in a sudden standoffish expression. Rob tried to catch himself. No, 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 my dreams are premonitory, usually. And they're usually not just dreams. They're nightmares. And they're terrors. I wasn't trying to accuse him of anything, but I woke up screaming, and of course he wanted to know why. Oh, Romeo stated, his brow releasing from its tight-knit place. Okay, so you were just scared. Well, then surely he'd understand. Well, he didn't. And, I don't know, I think he hates me now? Romeo blinked, sitting back. Rob, you still have an apartment, right? Yes. And he's paying for it? Shit, yes. Then he doesn't hate you. If he hated you, you'd be on the streets. He obviously still cares about you, and I think you need to sit down and have a conversation about this. Is that not what I'm doing? Rob sat back, too. With him. Yeah, yeah, I know. But what if he doesn't want to talk to me? I honestly think you're psyching yourself up for nothing, Romeo said. It's been a week and since we haven't had a real conversation. Rob barely remembered the night before, and he was pretty sure it had only happened because Gideon didn't want him to hurt himself trying to get the key into the hole. Besides... 
Rob hadn't been in any position to make up that night, and he was sure he'd only fuck things up more. Have you ever stopped to think that maybe he wanted you to come to him first? Rob pondered that for a second. No? Well, maybe he did. Just the suggestion. Romeo glanced down at his watch. Do you have to go? Rob asked, seeming almost hesitant. Romeo sighed and crumpled up his empty wrapper. Yeah, probably should, sorry. But hey, do you want to do this again sometime? Rob felt his lips curl into a smile. Yeah, you know what? I'd like that. I had a good time. I'll see you, Rob. Text you later. See you. And with that, Rob was alone again. You have just finished Blib Audio Stories, episode 6. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Silas. If you want to help support this channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash glib audio stories. And you can also buy our merch over on society6.com slash Silas O. Scott. Links are in the description. Thanks again for listening. Until next time.